What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove your factory head unit of your Mercedes-Benz W204. And in doing so, also show you how to connect the video signal of your reverse camera, as well as how to enter engineering mode of your audio system so that you can activate the camera so that your car recognizes it every time you go into reverse, therefore displaying your rear camera. All that coming right up. Okay, so first thing we need to do is of course open up the um, screen and then you see these two rubber points here, one on each side, you need to remove them in order to be able to pop out the air vent. So we'll remove these two rubber points, you just take them out and then from this point, you see these two points here, you have to put your tool, you have to get a hook tool like this so they can grip the inside. You go inside and then you pull out but when you're doing it you want to do it with just enough pressure to pull it out uh, you do the same to the other side so you get your tool in make sure it's in enough so that it gets a good grip but also you're not going to break it as well and then you just pull it out like that there you go and then once you get to this point you can just lift it up a little and then pull it out there we go it's coming out Alrighty, as you can see, it's clipped in by these points. Once we pull this out, you have three cables that are still connected to this air vent. There's one here, one here, and there's one on the other side. I'll show you after I remove these. So, in order to remove these, you see there is a, a tab here. So, you push on that and then pull it out. Same for this one, there's a tab here. So, you push on that tab and then you pull it out. So here's the tab, I'm going to push on this tab and then pull it out, just like that. Same for the other one, there's a tab on it, so we just push on it and pull it out. Okay, and pull that out. That's two. One and two. And then we must flip it over and we will see this white one that's here as you can see this white plug same principle there is a plug there is a tab on the other side you just have to press on it and pull it out here we go and then once you have this out you can release the whole thing if you just reroute the cable out like so okay you need your t20 and you need to remove these two T20 torque screws just like this they're both T20 torque screws okay that's two don't lose them don't drop them now once you have these removed there is a tab on the back of here now you can just get to it with your finger but if you cannot pull it up with your finger by all means use a flathead screwdriver and you notice there's a hole through here you have to be able to see this hole to know that the tab is completely pulled up okay there we go there is a hole here all righties now we'll just push these cables in and just leave them there okay and now from here what you want to do is you want to pull out and then lift diagonal up so pull it out and then lift keep lifting and then once you get to this point you have to lift it straight up and then it comes out as you can see so when you put it back in same principle as you can see it just drops in like that so in order to lift this out you want to pull it straight out straight and it will follow a groove pull it out there you go and then once you get to this point where it stops you lift it straight up and then it comes out like this now once you get to this point, you want to get a microfiber towel so that you can cover your gear knob so that it does not scratch your gear knob. So I've got a microfiber towel here. I'm going to fold it over twice so it has a little bit of layering like that. And then we'll lift this out. Okay, now from here, you're going to see a whole bunch of cables connected to the back. Let me show you. Now we have the back of the head unit, as you can see here. 
Let me give you a better look if I can. Okay, so for this plug, the big plug here on the back, what you need to do in order to remove it is you have to press on a lever here. And once you press on that lever, it allows you to pull it out a bit more. Okay, as you can see, now that lever comes out and all you do is lift it up and it pulls that out. There you go. As for this cable, all you have to do is pull it straight out, this big silver cable. You just wiggle it and pull it out. It will come out eventually. Just wiggle slowly. There we go. As you can see, there is no tab for this silver one. It just pulls straight out. Okay. And then normally you have this Fakra cable. Okay. So you have this Fakra cable that plugs in this way. Okay, and in order to remove this Fakra cable, you see this tab here? You press on this tab and then you just pull it out. Same goes for the rest of the cables. There is a tab on each of them. And in order to pull these Fakra cables out, you have to press on these tabs and then wiggle it out. It's going to be a bit tough, but just keep at it and it will eventually come out. Let me show you. So right here, I'm going to plug this Fakra cable back in. As you can see, I'll give you a good look at it. Okay, this Fakra cable. I'm plugging it in now and I'm going to push on this tab and then slowly wiggle it out. Okay, press on that cable, that tab, and then I'm going to slowly wiggle it out. Eventually, it's going to come out. Okay, see, as you can see here, it's slowly starting to come out, and I'm just wiggling it left to right like this while I'm pressing on that tab. And now because the tab has already passed its um, lock, locking point, I can just keep wiggling it out. And it's going to come out. Okay. As you can see, it's coming out further now. Now all I have to do is pull it straight out. There we go. So you press on it and then you wiggle it out. Same goes for this blue one here. I'm going to push on this blue tab and then wiggle it out slowly, like this. Remember, you have to press on the tab because it is ha that's how it locks it in. And then you just pull it out slowly. I even used the, the metal bits as, a, a, as a, a leverage point. Okay, so I press it in and then I just pull it out. It's slowly coming out now as you can see. And then you just keep doing the same thing. Just put, press on it. While you pull it out. And eventually it's just going to come out. There we go. That's the blue one out now. And now all you have left is the white one and you are done. Same principle, push in the tab and then wiggle it out. So now I'm going to press on this white tab while I wiggle it out, just like this. I'm going to cover it a bit because I need my left hand to do this. Okay. Just keep wiggling, keep wiggling. This is there we go. Now it's out. As you can see, that's how it locks in. It's just got that tab there. Okay? So you press on this tab and it releases it from its locked position. And then you just slowly move it out, wiggle it out, keep wiggling, and it will eventually it will come out. And if you want to remove the system completely, you have another plug on this side here. Just press on this tab and then disconnect it. There you go. That's the tab there. You press on that tab and pull it out. And now the whole system is removed. Now, just to give you a closer look of how you actually remove this. Now, normally, as you can see, it is locked in. It is plugged in just like this. So 
in order to remove it you have this tab right here as you can see you see this lever here you press on that and then you pull it back and as you pull this back it will unplug and then it will the whole thing will just come out because it's locked in from this groove here as well see this groove is also locked into a tab I'll show you so you can't see it properly but if you look here carefully there is a there is a a round little groove type clip that's here on each side right here and that's exactly what this groove here sits in you notice that groove here so when you press on this tab and you release it once that releases from that groove you can simply unplug it but as you as you saw once I press on this tab here and it releases it once you pull it up it will slowly unclip and then eventually you can just pull it straight out and that's how you release this whole clip from this head unit and that's it that's exactly how you remove the W204 head unit now I also wanted to point out that if you're no longer getting any video or audio from your entertainment system be sure to check the fuses relating to your entertainment system in your fuse box in the engine bay and if those fuses are okay then be sure to check this fuse here because it may just be this fuse I just wanted to point this out because you have the fuses in your engine bay as well as this fuse that plugs directly into the back of your head unit just to explain how you would have to connect your camera cable now I've got two cables here just to show you which is a better option now they, they're both brand new I already have an aftermarket camera installed okay I'm going to leave a link in the description below so that you can get a FACRA connection just like this okay now, as you can see the difference is the length of it here you're better off getting an angle FACRA connection like this that way you don't need to modify anything instead of using one like this that plugs straight in where this then becomes a problem because it cannot plug in with this cable if you get one like this you won't need any modification whatsoever you just have to all you have to do is plug it in and then this silver cable will also be able to plug in let me show you that's completely plugged in as you can see look at the clearance it's perfect no need for modification whatsoever that is a perfect connection right there that's why it's important that you try and get a cable like this however it is not a problem you can always bend this cable out a bit so that if you have a connection like this you can still use it but if you if you don't want to try and bend anything you want to leave everything the way it is then just buy a FACRA connection like this and then you're good to go you don't have to stress about how to plug it in bending this cable none of that stuff and the best thing about this cable is look at that look at the 360 it can do look at that isn't that great it's a great FACRA connection okay and now I'm going to show you how you need to plug in your camera okay I'm going to unplug everything just to show you okay so whether you have either of these it's the same thing as you can see they're the exact same cable except one is a angled cable and one is a straight cable in order to connect your camera cable all you have to do once you want to connect a camera to it your original FACRA connection will now be useless because you can only run one at a time okay and now from here you just plug in your adapter to RCA you leave it now I know a lot of you are going to be tempted to plug your original your factory FACRA connection into this adapter like this because it seems like that's what it's for as you can see here but you cannot do that the reason why your head unit can only read one audio FACRA cable at a time so if you plug in both of them it's not going to be able to read it so just unplug this if you if you're adding a reverse camera you're gonna have to unplug your factory FACRA cable and just leave it like this and now from here the cable that you route from your camera which is that six meter long RCA cable this one right here one end simply plugs into 
this RC, this adapter like this, okay? And then the other end will now route all the way to the back and then plug into the camera, okay? So, this is how you would do it, just like this. And then undo all this cabling and route it to the back. Okay, so in order to route your cable through, this is the easiest way I have found to do it. So, you plug your fucker in, and then you plug one end of your six meter long cable into your RCA adapter, just like this. Now remember, you no longer are going to use your original Fakra connection cable. This green cable here, this is going to be left unplugged now, your original Fakra cable. You just leave that there now. And then what I have done here is, if you look right there, you see where this cable is dropping now? Do not put it in any of these slots. That's exactly where your head unit slides in. So what I've done is I've dropped it here so that once you push your head unit in, this cable can just sit here and what I've done is dropped it in here and allowed it to drop down here as you can see this cable this cable right here this is the other side of the the video signal connection right there you see where this cables going all I've done is I've dropped it in here in this uh, corner where the air vent is and where this corner ends just in here where my finger is I've dropped it in there and it comes out just push your carpet in here a bit and you will find the cable drops through here where my finger is going in now and that's where your cable is going to come out like this just like this perfect and now all we have to do is route it all the way around and get underneath the light the side lining right there the same way that we routed the amplifier cable we're going to follow the exact same route and that's pretty much it. All you have to do now is just run it all the way to the back. Okay, and now once you have everything connected and you're ready to reinstall the head unit, you will notice these grooves here. There's one higher and then there's one a little bit lower. And then if you look at the side of your head unit, you notice these two grooves here. I mean these two um, round points. The top one will obviously slip into the top point. So make sure you follow the grooves. And then once you get the top one in, it will drop into the slot and then allow the bottom one to slide in also. As long as you follow where these groove points are, it will, it will slide back into place. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so now in order to reinstall it, all you have to do is make sure you lift this top point into that groove you can see right there, okay? So you lift it up, you slide it in, and then as you can see right there, the top one drops into place. And then you just have to make sure you lift it high enough so this slot here can go in. And once that goes in, you just let it down gently and it will just sit back into place. And there you go. It simply slides in like that. And now all you have to do from here is replace, push these two tabs back down and then simply replace the two T20 Torx screws and then reconnect all your wires. They only go into one slot. So, you know, you can't get that wrong. Just make sure you route these through the actual uh, air vent first and then you're done. So in order to activate your rear camera, you have to hold hang up one and hash for seven seconds. And then you'll see the screen change to engineering mode. There you go. That's engineering mode there. Now from here, in order to activate your camera, let me turn off this light. What you have to do is use your scroll knob and go down to the HW setting and then go down to head unit parameter. And then from here, you want to go to your third page and go to rear camera. And then you select SRVC. And then that will activate your rear camera. Now, if this setting doesn't work, then by all means, try the next setting and then the next setting. And that's it. Then once you select it, you go back out into it, back out into, just keep pressing back and then to exit, go down all the way to you see end and then click on end. Now from here, if the camera is activated, you will get a new menu option, which is review camera. And then it will ask you activation by R gear. Then you just simply activate that and simply 
go back out of it and go back out of everything and then wait about five minutes and then your rear camera should work once you engage reverse and that's how you activate your camera for the head unit once you install your reverse camera now remember that once you activate the setting you need to get out of everything turn off the car and maybe wait two to five minutes for everything to reset and then once you do that you can simply turn the car on go into reverse gear and see your reverse camera and that's it that's all there is to it well there you have it guys now before I go I've had a subscriber ask me how to actually hook up a reverse camera from start to finish so for my next video I'm going to do exactly that so be sure to tune in for that video and until next time if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video bye for now